1988 was the first year that monster trucks raced two at a time, side by side, for a World Points Championship. The circuit was the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. And that first year was tough, as trucks built for exhibition suddenly became racers. By mid-year, Jasmer was confident of a world title for USA 1. I, I knew by mid-season we were going to do it. There was no question in my mind at all. And we worked hard, every one of us, the guys in the shop, uh, you know, every week that thing had come back in pieces and we'd fix all week and send them out on the road again. And uh, Rodney just kept winning and we kept fixing and, and uh, ended up winning that championship. The Rodney referred to by Jasper is Rod Litzow, who in 1988 was a rookie. Litzow recalls getting his first assignment to climb aboard America's truck, USA 1. That was a scary, it's really, it, it was kind of weird because we went out there and Everett was planning to fly in, you know, we talked about I was going to drive and he said, yeah, maybe this year we'll put you in the seat. And we went down there with the intention that Everett was going to fly in. So we got down there and then all of a sudden when I was at the track, Everett called up and said, it's time, this is when you're going to drive. So that was the biggest, you know, scare all of a sudden that I wasn't expecting it. Appropriately, USA 1's 1988 title quest culminated in Louisville, Kentucky's Freedom Hall. Litzow and USA 1 needed to win three rounds to clinch the championship. Nightlife fell first, then USA 1 conquered Carolina Crusher. Next was none other than Bigfoot, the early season favorite. It was Bigfoot that battled USA 1 throughout 88 and pushed America's truck to the limit in this race. Here's how our TV commentators saw it. For the national championship in one run, Chevrolet and Ford. Who's it going to be? Let's out. Nails the Chevrolet. Chevrolet takes the win. Look out. Roger. Rod Let's out. On his nose. Now on his side. And he is down. It was just like a dream, you know, because we were... We shot the whole year, we were just shooting for take number two. We were going for second is what our goal was. And then it just came so possible to take number one. We were catching up so fast that it just worked out. And uh, when we were in uh, Louisville there, and just all we had to do is just a couple races, and it just worked out great. And that's why I just pushed it you know, to the limit there. And we took the roll on that one, but it took the win too. There's only one first time. And, and I don't care if I ever win another one again. Having won that first ever national championship was really important. It really felt good. How improbable was that championship for USA 1? America's truck whipped the original monster and all of Bigfoot's money and technology. And rookie Rod Lipsow topped the veterans a thing or two. Indeed, the first ever world title on the PNT Monster Truck Challenge is a point of pride for Everett Jasper and his USA 1 team. truck drivers and when it comes to great drivers you can match the fearless aggressive usa one duo of rod litzow and steve wilkie here's a look at the guts of rod litzow he's not afraid to push usa one to the limit the crash in michigan is described by close observers as one of the nastiest ever steve wilkie is just as aggressive here he is putting america's truck on its roof in virginia Wilkie inherited the driving chores in 1990 after Litzow injured his back in that Michigan crash. In the future, both men will drive separate USA 1 trucks. America's truck has crashed more than any other monster in the brief history of the sport. For whatever reason, be it track conditions or mechanical problems, one constant has been evident in each of those crashes. Either Litzow or Wilkie were pushing USA 1 to the limit. They know a crash can and will happen, but winning is the first priority. That attitude is called cockiness by some, but to the USA One team, it's all a part of being a winner. Rod Lipsdown, former gymnast and motorcycle hill climber, was the big winner in 1988 as a mere rookie, but he was in the monster truck since day number one. When I met Everett, there wasn't really Bigfoot only had the 48s on, and then Everett built the one with the 48s, and I was running my truck with 44s. Everybody was building big trucks, but then I more or less just grew up with it. I've been with Everett for 10 years now and watched the truck just build up. I used to paint him. That's, you know, I had a body shop back then. That's how me and him got acquainted. And I was painting for him and it just, one thing led to another. And then I got so busy with, you know, touring it and driving that I had to more or less back off the body shop stuff and 
do this sport full time with us. It's unbelievable. The more the time goes on now that the ESPN show is on, that uh, you know, anywhere, different places I go, and people will come up and say, you're, you're Rod, you know, and they do recognize me now in a lot of places, and it's kind of neat. When you do that, you go to grocery shopping, and all of a sudden, somebody will come up to you, or little kids will come running up to you. I like it. It's fun. When I look back at the videotapes now, the racing we were doing then was very, very crude compared to and slow compared to what we were doing by the end of 88 you know we really picked up the pace during 88 but rod had a real instinctive feel for the truck and uh, proceeded to uh, other than breakage he won just about everything he uh, every race he was at in 88 and uh, and naturally won the ended up winning the national championship steve wilkie was the chief mechanic on usa one when this out drove to that world title he was the guy in the background, laboring long nights and hot days to put the pieces back together. While Litzow is quiet and unassuming, Wilkie is intense and often outspoken. Early in his driving career, he was put into the unenviable position of filling Rod Litzow's shoes. The inevitable, unfair comparisons were made. The rookie mistakes came early on, but Wilkie soon blossomed into an outstanding driver. Overcoming the rookie jitters and the pressure of measuring up to Litzow comes from Wilkie's determination to never say die. Another part of that has to come from Wilkie's background, a background that includes a stint in the Marine Corps as part of what makes Steve Wilkie tick. Well, it, it goes all the way back to when I was eight years old. I grew up on a farm in northern Minnesota. So right away you learn a lot of common sense and, and practical skills associated with mechanics. And uh, when I finished high school in 1975, I went into the Marine Corps and uh, I flew 26,000 pound cargo helicopters for them. Uh, and what I mean by fly was uh, I was the crew chief. I was responsible for it mechanically and putting it in the air every day. The sensations, the thrills that are achieved by actually flying a six ton truck uh, associates more with, with a helicopter because you're leaving the ground, of course, and, and a number of things. But, uh, State line drag racing, is, I associate pretty much the, the psychological part of it and, and getting prepared to race and, and getting the equipment ready to go um, pretty much runs a parallel line with uh, quarter mile drag racing. Wilkie's first race came in the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. His nervousness was evident, but Lipsdown was there and saw lots of promise. For Wilkie, this was the first time he became fully aware of the high level of intensity required aboard USA One. After all, this is a 12,000-pound truck careening through the air at a high rate of speed. I have butterflies in the stomach, of course, uh, but yet the intensity level and people, I, I think, don't understand that sometimes, how intense psychologically you have to be to not only handle one of these trucks, but be competitive against the people that are running out there who are becoming very, very fast. Uh, I think through the cycle, if you, if you strip off the psychological shell that I placed around myself that night, uh, I was a nervous schoolboy, more or less, getting into a big toy. Uh, Steve really, really, really gets psyched up when he's going to race. I mean, he just, he just, you can hardly talk to him. He's so psyched up. Rod is a lot more mellow. He, he doesn't get that fi visibly excited. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because they both win and that's that's all that matters to me steve has got less time under his belt and it'd be, it'd be even if i could make a comparison i don't think that uh, it would be fair at this time i don't know i never really make comparisons I, I make a habit of if they're i look at what each guy does and i don't try and tell steve that he's got to be like rod or vice versa um i i like to refer to what I do in the race truck is a stab and steer motion because you stab the thing, you hold it to the floor uh, and steer it around until you get to the finish line and, and you know hopefully we wind up with a shiny side up. Uh, I'd be not ashamed of what I've done by any means. Uh, I cleared 12 cars. I was the only one to clear 12 cars in Dallas with a 65 foot end run and uh, anybody that knows anything about monster truck, that's, that's quite a feat. And uh, the, the thing is I know I can drive the truck. Drive that truck they can. Rod Lipsow and Steve Wilkie, the co-pilots of USA One. Decorating the walls of the USA One shop in Minnesota is evidence of their aggressive driving style. More about those crashes and flips coming up next on USA One, America's Monster Truck.